I think 78, Brunzel's his name. He took uh, type two diabetics. He made a synthetic diet, 45% <clears throat> sugar, and then double white sugar, multi-dextrose, plain table sugar, doubled it to 85% white sugar. Every aspect of the diabetes improved. Walter Kempner, back in the uh, 40s and 50s, published his results on treating type two diabetics with rice, table sugar, fruit, and juice. And Kempner knew back in the 50s that sugar makes insulin work better and cures diabetics. But you see, we've got it entirely backwards these days, thinking sugar causes diabetes. You know, it's just, it's so backward and bizarre, nobody stands a chance. All right, so we have weight loss. How long does it take to lose weight? All right, we've got two spoons. This is an analogy here. Actually, we'll go over one spoon for now. And we've got some soy ice cream, empty. Empty like my brain. Um, and let's say we get the spoon. Can you set a little lid there? And let's say we get this spoon and we're just gonna go. Can you hear that? Is this microphone better? What's gonna happen? Nothing's happened. Nothing's happened. But what if I did this for a few more hours? What if you did it for a few days? What if I kept doing it for six months? Would this still be scratch free or would it actually wear down to the bottom? Could I literally wear away every skerrick of this paper cardboard box with the spoon? Just go like that. Could I? Yeah, it could. But what? There's no results there. There's no results because it's only a short term. If you want long term results, man, you gotta do shit long term. Now, there's people out there who claim my advice is wrong or whatever. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, hang on. I'm actually not even following doing all this advice. I'm not even fucking riding on my bike much. You know, I know one person who, who was obese last year and then I looked at their Strava just then. They've done more Ks than I've done in the last six months. And even this year in January. Now, everyone knows Duranrata does a decent amount of Ks in January. And this person has done more kilometers on the bike than me in January. And I've been training with professional riders. You've seen my videos with Peter Sagan. I, I've been training world champions, Tour de France level riders. And we've got a person who's doing more than that and time-wise as well. And they're new to cycling. So they're getting some dramatic results. So if you're overweight, if you're obese, all you have to do is two things. Eat the same foods that I would eat. Sit down at the dinner time or breakfast time or whatever and go, would Drew Rider eat this as his staple? If the answer is yes, eat it. Ask the question, would Freely eat this as her staple? Because people say, oh, but guy, girls, guys can't get fat. There's still people out there who say guys can eat anything and guys can't get fat. Okay, so let's pretend that that's true, which is fucking not. Let's go with Freely. What does Freely do? You know, she's the same shit I've always eaten. So and she rides a bike up hills and stuff like that. But there's people out there who really think women and men and women are different when it comes to weight loss. They're just, I don't know, people are dumb. Where am I going with this? And just sit down at the, at the, at the meal and go, would Harley eat this? Would Freely eat this? If the answer is yes, then eat it as your staple. Vegan donuts, no. Rice, sugar, potatoes, fruit, white rice, corn, yes. Then say, I'm going to ride my bike more than Duran Riders riding. Because I'll post everything to Strava, unless I'm on an e-bike, but e-bike's cheating. You know, so if you're riding more than me and you're eating the same foods that I would eat, do you really think that you're not going to get results? And if you do it long term, how simple is that? How fucking simple is that? How dumb do fucking people have to be to realize that long term is where it's at? You know, people start up a YouTube channel <laughs> and we do the month or six months like Harley I haven't bought a house yet your advice doesn't work and it's like motherfucker is he serious are you fucking serious like or, or there's some people what they do is they go like that right and then they put this spoon down here and it's and then they're using this one and all of a sudden the results happen but all the results happen from this spoon not from this one this one just came along so what people do is they they, they ride their bike for six months, do more kilometers than Duran Rider, and then all of a sudden the results happen. Like, oh my God, like, this is just because of this. It's like, no, 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 it's called sustained output. 
sustained habits. You didn't get fucking obese overnight, and you won't get fucking as lean as me overnight. It takes time. And so people just forget all about metabolism, metabolic effect. Like, if you want to lower insulin, ride your bike more. And insulin is the number one anabolic hormone. Insulin is more anabolic than testosterone. That's why the bodybuilders use insulin who are non-diabetic. So if you want to raise your insulin, keep it raised. It's not about... People use this word, insulin spikes. Spikes. Oh my God, it spikes your blood sugar. It spikes your insulin. Everything fucking spikes it, man. What you don't want if your goal is weight loss is sustained, elevated insulin. Spike is normal. Spike in blood sugar. Spike in... Do- oh my God, spike in dopamine. Spike in blood sugar. All these dumb fucks. They just use that word, spike. These people in real life boring as fuck no sense of adventure all they care about is weight loss weight loss weight loss weight loss weight loss and they're boring to be around I've been around them man and sometimes they're good at lying at the start but at the end of the day their their true goal of just all they care about is weight loss and they're boring as fuck to be around they're just boring fucking people because they're always critiquing themselves overly so you got to do stuff long term but anyway insulin is anabolic and to weight lower insulin is you lower your fat intake increase your sugar increase your sugar intake according to dr mcdougall who says increases in white sugar white table sugar decrease insulin sensitivity because it lowers your fasting insulin levels all right that's dr mcdougall direct quote look up the video i've done about it dr mcdougall says eat more white refined sugar to lower insulin levels to increase insulin sensitivity when you have increased insulin sensitivity you have lower fast insulin because it's not always circulating because your insulin receptor cells aren't blocked from all excess fat you're eating Fuck off the fat, fuck off the oils, ride your bike more than Duranida, and you'll get insane results. You don't have to do it right as much as me, but if you want fast results, then do more as me. Simple as that. And if you're getting injured, you, you, you can't get injured following my advice. Impossible, unless you crash into the back of a car because you weren't paying attention. But I always say, pay attention. So we got to get this one simple fact down that has been established, even in diabetes care two years ago, they took type one diabetics, they dramatically increased their white sugar intake and decreased the insulin needs of type one diabetics. You know, it's always been the same, but everybody knows different. Don't eat potatoes, turns to sugar, makes you fat, gives you diabetes. It's exactly the opposite in terms of ultimate disease outcome. Thing for uh, the consumer and scientists and medical doctors to get straightened out. And it should have been straightened out in the 1920s when a fellow by the name of Percival Hemsworth published his basic research, and it was all published by 1940 in the British Medical Journal. And it's just no question about it. Fat, we're talking about pig fat, cow fat, olive fat, paralyzes insulin, increases insulin needs, carbohydrate, including pure white sugar increases the sensitivity to insulin. It was published by Brunzel from University of Washington in the New England Journal of Medicine in